Today we're going to be talking about Erickson's psychosocial development and social environment, or, sorry, social emotional development theories, and in particular how relationships and interactions with others are able to help develop learning in a child or an individual. So first we're going to talk about Erickson's psychosocial development. Um, first of all, this is children folk or children face um, crises as an individual versus society at different stages of life. These could be um, specific ages or particular age ranges. As everybody is different, they all grow at different rates. However, um, within a normal zone, you know, let's say between three and five years, then they should be in a certain stage at that point. Um, if they overcome this crisis or this um, existential um, source of conflict, then they develop a virtue, which is a positive outcome that comes from this crisis and is actually um, part of their development as a whole. It's a tool that they will take with them to help grow and mature as they learn. If they cannot pass this crisis, they actually develop a reduced ability to move to higher phases. It's not only that they become stuck, they actually become slightly regressive and it becomes progressively or exponentially harder for them to move to higher phase. Um, not only because of the inability of their own performance, but because of the group that they're in, they feel inferior to because everybody around them is going higher, better, faster, stronger, etc. They don't feel confident in themselves. This is influenced by culture and it is influenced by society. So while these factors are all very true to the age range that they are in, they are all very prone to um, being influenced by the society that they are in. And it is spanned for an entire lifetime. It's not just specifically to children. It is growing with the age group that they are in. So the eight important phases are trust versus mistrust, which is age one. Um, the positive virtue here is hope, and the negative virtue is fear or suspicion. Feed was cut off, unfortunately. Uh, so the eight important phases of this are going to be trust versus mistrust, as I was saying, which is around age one. Um, this has a positive virtue of hope and a negative virtue of fear or suspicion. So what this really means is as children are identifying and learning who that they can trust or who they can't trust in this particular situation, usually a parental figure or a supervisor of some sort, they begin recognizing faces, they establish a relationship, a bond is formed, and that leads to hope that I am going to be provided, this individual will provide for me and give me what I need as I need it. If that is not given, they start to have fear, suspicion, anxiety, they start to regress instead of progress. And that moves on into stage two, or phase two, anatomy versus shame. So the positive value here, or virtue here, is going to be will. They're going to actually grow into an autonomous individual, or begin to grow into an autonomous individual, where they start doing things for themselves. Um, they start taking action. They start being a little more aggressive with what they want and don't want. Um, the terrible twos is a particular phrase that is used for this um, phraseology and it is in fact because children are trying to figure out what they want and don't want. Now if you shame them or if you put them down and tell them you can't do that, you're not allowed to do that, you're not able to do that, they start to feel shame or guilt. They feel like they are not good enough in order to do it and they actually once again will regress and not become autonomous. They'll need help. They'll need something from you in order to do it. They will become codependent or dependent on you. This moves into the age of three to five, as I mentioned earlier with the bracket of the age, the initiative versus the guilt. Now, initiative is they're starting to become leaders. They're starting to ask questions. They're starting to step into their own and say, I will do this. I'm going to start something as opposed to just doing something. Now, if you stop them from doing that, if you don't let them start, then they feel like they're not good enough. They don't feel like they are able or capable of doing anything, which is very similar to the autonomy versus shame, but they start feeling guilty if they try to do something. And this is when we start seeing that kind of secluded, away from everybody else, kind of down on themselves personality come through. So the v positive value here is, or virtue is they get 
purpose. They feel like, wow, I can be a leader. Wow, I am good at this. I like this. I want this. They can start figuring out a direction. But if you don't give them that, if you don't let them have that, then they have inadequacy. They don't feel like they're good enough. So that moves on into the age bracket of 6 to 12, which is the industry versus the inferiority. Now, the industry being they feel industrious. They feel like they're capable of being strong in what they're doing. They are starting to develop skills. They start developing abilities. They start having a passion for something. And that positive virtue becomes competence. You can tell them, go do something, they will do it. Then they'll take the initiative to be industrious, go step further. However, that guilt leading up to inferiority from stage three to four, inferiority is I'm not good enough. They don't take that. They don't feel like they are good enough wherever they are, and you can tell them to do something and they'll pass it off to someone else. They won't do it. They'll disobey you because they don't enjoy it. They don't like it. They're not feeling empowered by it, whatever the reason being. So this leads into a very big age group, and I don't mean big just because it's age 12 to 18. It's the six age, your six year age group, the biggest we've seen so far. It is actually the teenage pre-adult years. Now, this is identity versus role confusion. The major difference here is going to be bodies are starting to change with puberty. Um, hormones are starting to adjust. People are starting, ind the individuals are starting to develop new feelings towards the opposite sex. You know, they're starting to develop different um, physique and build, and they're starting to become either better or worse because of growing pains or just general ability at things. They are feeling more or less confident in themselves. There's a lot of change going on. And so this can lead to a positive virtue of fidelity, which is I feel confident in who I am. I feel strong in who I am versus rebellion, which is the negative virtue where they don't feel empowered. They don't feel like they fit in anywhere. So they have to fight the powers that be because they have to make a place for themselves. They are rebelling against the powers that be in order so they can stand out. This leads into intimacy versus isolation, which is 18 to 40. This is the adult years. Intimacy being love. We are now one at a phase where we want more as opposed to just being stuck in the phases that we are, which is isolation or being lonely. And that, after we reach the um, age of 40, up until 65, grows into a uh, generativity versus a generosity of, sorry, versus stagnation. Now, um, that's going to lead into a care for others. It's, hey, I had a great life. I'm doing well. I want to teach. I want to instruct. I want to help others to reach higher phases versus stagnation. I didn't do anything. I, I'm not productive. I'm a waste. And the value starts going down and down and down, which after you reach age 65, grows into integrity versus despair. And this goes through the rest of your life. Um, where the positive virtue is wisdom. You feel like you have information to pass on. You have experience to pass on. Experience is the best teacher, but it doesn't always have to be your experience. So passing that on to somebody else helps them to accelerate through phases, learn more, build more, grow more. But you can also look back on your life and you can say, negative virtue, I'm dissatisfied. I wish I had done this. I wish I hadn't done this, which is in its own a piece of wisdom. However, it is a very different piece altogether. Now, this correlates with social and emotional development, which includes both intra and interpersonal processes. This is how individuals are going to interact with each other and interact within themselves. So it includes a child, or in this case, anyone um, from any age, experience, expression, and management of emotions, and the ability to establish the positive and rewarding relationships with the, other, with the others around them. It's learning how to interact. It's learning how to receive information in the form of relationships and bonds in order to give that back to another as well as learn how to use it to develop yourself, thus the intra and the interpersonal processes. So it all starts young. I say this because responsive caregiving supports infants. Responsive caregiving being they cry, you're there to take care of them. In the beginning to regulate their emotions, 
basically to say it's okay to be sad it's okay to be happy you try and make them happy instead of being sad so that they learn what essentially good and bad is with emotions and that one is preferred over the other and to develop a sense of predictability oh when i cry mommy and daddy are going to come pick me up and take care of me they're going to love me we talked about that with the earlier phases and erickson where there's a trust versus mistrust there's safety trust versus mistrust and responsiveness to their social environments so it aids emotional security. It's when I'm sad, I'm protected, I'm secure. So they know if I'm hurt, I will be covered, I will be taken care of. And it aids in emotional regulation as well, which is when I'm sad, I will make sure that I am taken care of um, and I can go somewhere safe. So I can protect myself now. I don't need to cry. I don't need to be around everybody else and break down. I have a safe space I can go home and I can break down to with safe people that I can be open and emotional with. All of this is aided by the bonding of a parent, a guardian, a teacher, an instructor, some higher uh, level individual with a younger level individual. And this never stops. It moves into adulthood even where you can see adults in their 20s, 30s, 40s that still love and care and respect their parents because they were given that at such a young age. This also helps control or develop t temperament and impulse control. So temperament being your mood, your personality, how you handle certain situations, and um, impulse control being, once again, how you interact with others when they do something that may trigger you, set you off, not be something that you like. This impulse of, I want to punch you, I want to hit you, well, that's not exactly okay. I need to understand those social cues as well as what is and what is not okay. So the great benefit of all this to the society of the individual is social understanding. You can comprehend others' needs because as you are given respect, love, care, guidance, you can learn how to give that back. And you learn that social understanding through social cues, through interactions, through that trust, mistrust um, starting out. You have an effective, which is relating moods to others, feelings, and attitudes. You can relate to those other people. You can say, I understand what the moods, feelings, and attitudes you're going through with and how to handle them. So when you see someone sad, you know the social cue is leave them alone or be nice, be gentle with them. You don't want to goof off and make a joke with them. Empathy, you relate to others' feelings. It's, hey, I felt that before and I know what I need to do. I felt sad. I felt happy. I know how to take care of you. I'm not going to rain on your parade and make it worse or take away your joy that you feel. And self-efficacy, which is believing in your own abilities, which can benefit society in that if you feel empowered, you can empower others around you. And they all go in hand to hand with Erickson's virtues. Different side of the coin, but still very valuable. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed learning about today's lesson.